Welcome to the uh, Ward 7 show and today I have with me Mr. Steve Carson and Mr. Leroy Richardson and we're going to talk about something that don't get a whole lot of conversation on the Channel 20 and that is golf and uh, one of the things that we're going to emphasize starting out is the fact that Steve Carson is the um, the pro at Lincoln Golf Course and Oklahoma City has five municipal golf courses, is that right? That's correct. And I think the both of you will attest to the fact that we have some of the best municipal courses in the United States. How did you think this came about in reference to Lincoln Golf Course is one of those five and uh, Mr. Richardson, you serve on the, uh, the Golf Commission for the City of Oklahoma City, which is the commission that oversees and manages the, the operations, I would say, of the municipal golf course. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, how long have you been on the Golf Commission? Uh, very long. I happen to now be the, the oldest and the most reappointed Golf Commissioner ever, okay. I think. Okay. But I'm still there and still, we're tr still trying to do a good job. Okay. Steve, you've been with the, uh, the uh, Lincoln for how long? I've been at Lincoln since 1990. Since 1990. Now, there's rumors, and I, I say there's rumors. I think it's actually uh, it's, it's a truth of, 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 of statement that you have been a part of, the Golf Commission has been engaged, and there has been some very serious uh, dialogue and possible some even drawings of, of a new golf club at Lincoln Golf. Is that right? That's exactly right. Why do y'all want to do that? Well, for, for one, we have a 50-plus year old building that is um, energy efficiency is not part of the vocabulary when you talk about the existing building. Okay. And we are just don't have the space to do the types of things that today's public golfer wants to do at, at their golf course. And uh, we're considered the public golfer's country club. They want to come out, have fun, spend time, bring their family, maybe eat lunch or dinner, and uh, we want to be able to do that and let them have a very enjoyable time and want to come back again and again. So do you see a trend or is there a, a trend in reference to golf clubs, uh, the traditional golf clubs where basically you go in, you you do what golfers do and uh, maybe there's a little uh, canteen or a, uh, a beverage uh, setting and, and then that's it. It sounds like you're talking about uh, diversifying the, the uh, amenities inside the golf club, is that right? Yeah, we're, we're, we're certainly looking at becoming more of a, a player in the community side of Ward 7 in Northeast Oklahoma City. Uh, we would like to uh, provide a building and a setting that would allow civic groups to come out and meet and uh, have a, maybe a lunch meeting, uh, social events, weddings, uh, reunions, uh, all types of uh, different groups can take advantage of a setting that we have, which is an absolutely beautiful part of Oklahoma City. And the new building would uh, have overviews of the wonderful landscape and would just be a great setting for all types of events, not only golf events, but social events. Okay. Uh, you know, when we talk about the municipal courses, there's Trosper, Lincoln, Hefner, Early Wine, and Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, that's correct. And Mr. Richardson, having served on the Golf Commission, how do you think that Oklahoma City has been able to preserve the and sustain the the class of of golf in Oklahoma City from its municipal courses? That's different than than a lot of cities because I hear people talk about, you know, how do y'all do it in Oklahoma City and the 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 system that you operate under. Uh, the prices that you have, and even though when you have people thinking that we're going to raise the, the fees, you know, they're really much lower than they are in a lot of other cities. Is that correct? Uh, when I first came to Oklahoma City, I was amazed at our golf commission here. 
how it operated. I had been in golf for many years, in the administrative of golf for many years prior to my coming here. And it, it uh, amazed me that this was the only city that I knew in the United States that the city general fund was not part of the golf system. Uh, the way that we operate here is the mayor has appointed nine commissioners, and these nine commissioners hire professionals at each of the golf courses, and they actually operate the system with the feeling that what we're doing is we're to furnish to the public of Oklahoma City the best golf experience they can afford, they can have at the least amount of funds. All of the revenues that come in to the golf courses are put back into our product, into the golf courses. There are seven of the courses that we have and each one is a equal partner in the organization and the money is not dis is distributed proportionately also when we get ready to improve something we don't go to the general fund of the city the city does not have to f go to a great expense to allow that particular item we go directly to the bonds, revenue bonds. We pay our own bills, and that way we can improve. We have improved since I've been on the Golf Commission. We've improved Lincoln, both the West Course and the East Course. We've improved the greens at Trosper. We built a new course at Early Wine. We redid the south course at Early Wine. We redid the north course at Hefner. And we also did a new pumping system for Hefner and an irrigation system for the south course. We did all of that with only increasing, with increasing fees less than $10. Right, that's correct. And did you less than ten dollars? So, Steve, when you when you increase the fees at the golf course, do you get a lot of resistance from from your from your standard uh, golfers who are there on a regular basis? I mean, is that something that they resist uh, very much in reference to complaining? I know I, I wouldn't call it necessarily resistance. I I think our players are just like anybody. When when the price of something goes up, they wished it didn't have to go up. Right. But I feel like, and I, and I believe all of our golfers believe that our product that we're providing is so good and they enjoy it being out at the golf courses so much that they don't mind paying a few dollars to get the type of amenities that we're, we're able to provide. You know, I was playing one Sunday and um, my, my friend, who was very familiar with the course, showed me the old first clubhouse. Mm -hmm. at, at Lincoln and it was like boy you talk about some history yes uh, but I understand that it's no longer part of Lincoln Park now is that correct that's correct that's correct it, it, but it's, it belongs to the zoo it, it, it was built in 1922 okay that was when the first Lincoln Park golf course was built the uh, second 18 was built in 1933 in 1960 the existing clubhouse that we're operating out of today was was uh, built and mainly that relocation was because of the zoo was expanding uh, the the old clubhouse kind of set back in in a corner next to the zoo which really didn't allow for any expansion of of that facility so they moved it to its current location and that's exactly where we're going to build our our new building is we're going to level the old building and and put up a new one now, so the new building will look 
will be sitting up on a hill then? It will be elevated slightly. Okay. Uh, it, we're going to a, a, be able to have a, uh, uh, our cart storage facility will be in the basement of that building and so then the actual clubhouse will sit on top of it. So there'll be some elevation there that's not in, in, not in the current building. Okay, okay. Uh, both of you have been, you know, golf is part of your life. And when we look at the, the young people in America today and the introduction of golf to them, uh, we both know that there has been a, a major gap as it relates to African Americans and, and golf as far as high school and middle school. But the trend is changing and there's been a, a great move uh, from an organization called the First Tee that uh, I believe you, Mr. Carson, you serve on the, the board with the First Tee. Yes. And Mr. Richardson, although you don't serve on the local board, you've been involved with the organization on a national level, is that correct? Yes. And, and other organizations as it relates to golf of introducing it to young people. Yeah. Do you see this as being a major uh, change as it relates to how golf is going to be probably within the next 20, 30 years? I certainly see it as a major change, and I'm, and it's a welcome change. The the uh, the the use of golf to introduce to the youth of of the Afro American community to the Hispanic community to all of the minorities that basically haven't been included in in golf programs in the past. It, it's vital to to what we do and what we're all about as a city. In a, in a community. And uh, the First Tee has just done a marvelous job in going into the schools at, at very young ages, elementary and middle school ages, and in introducing golf, but not only introducing golf, teaching the values that can be learned from golf. Yes. Honesty and integrity and, and uh, those types of things that, that a lot of sports, unfortunately, don't teach as well as, as we would like them to right. teach. Well, the First Tee has a, very, a brand new facility now, and uh, it is a, an icon right there on the corner, and a lot of people now know what it is, although they had misconceptions about what right. it was going to be or what it was. Uh, now they see the young people out there on Saturday mornings and mm -hmm. sometimes during the week, and so they know it's a golf uh, magnet for, for the young people, and it's the First Tee. Uh, I mean, I guess it would be considered their office now, right? That's yes, right. that is their that is That's their headquarters. Their, headquarters. their headquarters for yes. the first D program. The rounds up at uh, at Lincoln and all the other golf courses, Mr. Richardson. Yes, and it's uh, ma we hope that it's not mainly due to the weather. Okay. Because all over the country, like I deal all over the country, golf has been kind of going down and down uh, over the last couple few years. But this year in Oklahoma City, our golf is, is really improving. Mr. Richardson, at age 84, uh, pardon me if I, I, I give that out, <laughs> but at age 44, you are still active on tournaments and playing in tournaments and on the golf course. Is that that's, correct? That's correct. Well, we want to commend you for your service to the city of Oklahoma City, and, and I just admire the fact that you you go to places you go and play in the tournaments you play in and win some. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. and Steve, thank you so much for for your commitment to to golf in Oklahoma City. I think well, you all you. are doing a fantastic job. Uh, and you know, having recently started the game myself, but listening to people all over the United States when you travel, it's amazing how much they compliment Oklahoma City and our municipal golf courses. And it's all due to the two of you as part of your involvement and of course your other members on the, on the, the golf commission. And of course, Steve, you have uh, your, camar your, your other brothers of the, of the golf world as right. far as your pros at Trosper and Hefner and uh, Early, Wine. Early Wine and of course also at Jimmy Stewart. So, and, and Jimmy Stewart has been stated as one of the, the best nine hole courses. That's true you know, around. So we have some great golf in Oklahoma City and thank you all for being a part of the uh, the Ward 7 show today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.